From physics, we know that whenever a fluid is moving inside a pipe, that fluid will create a force on the walls of that pipe, and that will create pressure. And we define pressure to be the force per unit area. Now, in the same analogous way, when we have blood moving inside a blood vessel, that blood will create a force on the walls of that blood vessel, and our blood pressure is simply the force per unit area. So let's suppose we have this blood vessel, we have blood moving inside the blood vessel, inside that blood we have many individual molecules, ions, we have cells, we have different particles, and when these things collide with the walls of the container, that will create a force on the walls. Now, if we sum all those individual forces in this particular region of the blood vessel and we divide it by the area of the walls of the blood vessel within that particular section, we get our measurement called the blood pressure. Now, in our cardiovascular system, we have different types of blood vessels. We have large and small arteries, we have large and small veins, we also have capillaries. Now, the question is, why is there a pressure variation between one location and a different location inside our blood vessel system? So, we're going to discuss why there is a difference in pressure between arteries, veins, and capillaries. And let's begin with arteries. Now, Remember that arteries are basically those blood vessels that connect directly to the ventricle chamber of our heart. And these arteries always carry blood away from the ventricle of the heart and to the organs, the tissues, and the cells of our body. Now, let's take a look at the following diagram. So, we have the heart and we also have the surrounding vessels, blood vessels. Now, let's focus in on the left ventricle. The left ventricle contains a very thick layer of muscle and that is shown in black. So, we have the thickest layer of muscle within the left ventricle as shown. Now, that's because it's the ventricle that creates that hydrostatic pressure in the first place that forces all that blood to move into our blood vessel. And the blood vessels that connect directly to the left ventricle are these blood vessels. It's our aorta, which is the largest artery in our body. So, this left ventricle forces all that blood to quickly fill this blood vessel, the aorta, and that's exactly why this large artery contains a very high pressure because it's connected directly to that pump that establishes that high pressure in the, uh, in the first place. In fact, if we study the anatomy, the structure of the artery, arteries are made specifically to withstand these high pressures. They have a very thick layer of muscle within our tunica media layer of that artery. So large arteries and smaller arteries, they basically have a relatively high hydrostatic pressure because of this reason. Now, if we take a look at the following diagram, this is exactly what the diagram describes. The y-axis is the pressure given in millimeters of mercury, and the x-axis is basically our, are the different types of blood vessels. So, if we look at our largest artery, our aorta, and the smaller ones, our arteries, this is where our pressure is at a highest value. Now, when we go from the arteries to the tiniest arteries called the arterioles, we have a very sharp drop in blood pressure as shown by the slope of this line. The question is why? Why is there a drop in blood pressure when we go from the arteries to the arterioles and what is the benefit of that to our body? So the reason there is a drop in blood pressure is because our arterioles have a relatively high area to volume ratio. And what that means is the volume of blood that travels inside our arterioles interacts with much more of the surface area of the wall. And what that basically means is we have a much higher resistance 
and that decreases our pressure and it also decreases the velocity with which the blood actually moves along our arterioles. Now, the question is, why is that beneficial? So the velocity of the blood flow decreases, but why is this actually beneficial? Well, the answer lies in our capillaries. The arterioles empty out that blood directly into our capillaries. And capillaries are these really specialized blood vessels that are very, very thin. In fact, they're only a single cell layer thick, and that means they are not actually built to withstand any high pressure like our arteries are built. And in fact, because within the capillaries, we have an exchange of nutrients and waste products taking place, that basically means is for that exchange to take place efficiently, the flow of the blood within the capillaries has to be relatively slow. So the reason, uh, the reason that we need a drop in pressure is to make sure that the pressure and the rate at which our uh, fluid is flowing within the capillaries is low so that the capillaries don't actually pop and so that the capillaries can actually exchange those nutrients and waste products effectively and efficiently. Now, the uh, one quick way that I can explain why the velocity within the capillaries is low is by using something called the continuity equation. The continuity equation, Q equals AV, comes from fluid dynamics, comes from physics. So within our entire cardiovascular system, our Q remains constant. Q is simply the flow of blood within our system. The flow of blood doesn't actually change because we have a closed cardiovascular circuit, a closed cardiovascular system. Now, what does change within the blood vessels is the A, the cross-sectional area, and V, the velocity of that fluid. Now, it turns out that if we take the sum of all the cross-sectional areas of all the individual capillaries, it will be much greater than the cross-sectional area of the arteries and of the veins. So the cross-sectional area, the total cross-sectional area for the capillaries is the greatest. Now, as we increase the A to keep the Q the same, the V must decrease and that's exactly why within the capillaries the velocity of blood flow is the lowest because the total cross-sectional area of the capillaries is basically the greatest. So we see that within the aorta and the large and smaller arteries we have a high pressure but then as we go into the arterioles the resistance to flow increases, the velocity of the blood flow decreases, and the pressure also drops. And that's to ensure that the capillaries don't break as a result of any high pressure and that the fluid exchange, the nutrient exchange, can take place within our capillaries. Now, the veins connect to our capillaries on the other side. So the capillaries basically take the deoxygenated blood and dump it out into the, uh, the small veins known as the venules. And then we go into small veins and large veins and finally into our vena cava. So once the blood travels through the capillaries, it enters the venules and the veins. Now, let's recall what the structure is of our vein. The vein also contains a three-layer system, just like the artery, but it has a very thin layer called the tunica media. So it has a very thin layer of muscle. And what that means is our veins are inelastic, they do not recoil, so they can easily expand when the blood enters these veins. And because they can easily uh, expand, that decreases our pressure within the veins. On top of that, what also decreases is our flow, the velocity with which our blood actually flows. And on top of that, because veins have to move that blood against the force of gravity, that will additionally decrease the flow velocity of our blood within veins. 
So that's exactly why within veins, we also have a low pressure and we also have a low velocity with which our blood actually moves. Now, of course, we have things like the valve system inside the vein and the skeletal muscle that allow that movement to actually take place. But that's a different story. So let's take a look at this diagram. Once again, the pressure is the y-axis as we go from the large artery to the smaller arteries, we have this very high pressure, but then we have a drop taking place between the arterioles and our arteries right over here. And eventually when we get to the capillaries, that ensures that the, cap uh, the capillaries don't have a high pressure and have a low velocity of blood flow. Then we have the venules, the veins, and our vena cava, and then the cycle basically repeats. Now, this describes the diagram only for our systemic cardiovascular system. The pulmonary circulation looks very similar, except the pressure within our pulmonary artery is smaller than the pressure within our aorta, which is this one right here. Now, the way that we actually measure blood pressure inside our body is by first calculating our blood pressure within our aorta, this blood vessel right here, the largest artery, during systole. Systole is the point when our left ventricle actually contracts and creates that hydrostatic pressure. So, as soon as the left ventricle contracts, it creates that pressure within our aorta and that is systole. That is about 120 mmHg normally. Likewise, we also measure our pressure during relaxation. That is known as a diastole. Diastole refers to the process when our left atrium fills the left ventricle and that's when our blood vessel basically relaxes and the ventricle relaxes. And the normal value for that is about 80 millimeters of mercury. So the way that we measure pressure is by taking the ratio of the largest to the smallest. So we have contraction, our systole 120, and relaxation 80. So it's 120 of, uh, uh, um, over 80 is the normal blood pressure. Now, the last thing I'd like to briefly discuss is why there is a pressure difference, pressure gradient, in the first place. Notice in the arteries, we have a large pressure. In the veins, we have a small pressure. The question is, why does that actually exist? Well, one good analogy is the movement of an object when you let go. So if you let go of an object, it will travel down to the surface of the earth. And that's because it's moving from a high potential, gravitational potential, to a low gravitational potential. It's moving down its potential gradient. In the same exact way, we have a high pressure, we have a low pressure, so we establish a pressure gradient and blood always moves from a high pressure to a low pressure, that is, from our arteries to our veins. So it's because we have a pressure gradient inside our blood vessel system that the blood can actually move in the first place from the arteries to the veins and continue moving as our pump continues pumping that blood.